I have with me one of the smartest black men on this side of heaven, as long as he's not on a motorcycle. Alan West is here. <laughs> Alan West is here, folks. He's the chairman now of the Republican Party of Texas. Alan, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming back on. I appreciate it. Hey, it's, it's a it's a great to be back with you, Jesse Lee, and you're a dear friend. And I just want you to know that I will not be riding motorcycles <laughs> anymore. It's uh, it's being restored. It's going to be customized, but it's going to be auctioned off for a faith based military charity. Nice. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, several of my friends uh, had motorcycles, and I'm like, y'all shouldn't have motorcycles. People don't drive well in the city. They don't watch what they're doing. What happened exactly to you in the accident you had on your, on your motorcycle? Well, it's very interesting because it happened back on uh, Memorial Day weekend. Yes. Uh, it was a Saturday. I just, I just finished speaking uh, down at a rally in Austin, Texas. A car cut over in front of me from the left lane into the center lane, and, and, and uh, I was the lead rider in a group of four. But for whatever reason, the motorcycle behind me had gotten too close, wasn't paying attention, and he clipped me from behind. And, uh, of course, I went down at 75 miles per hour on Interstate 35 uh, heading north back towards Dallas. And it's just the grace of God that, that I'm alive. And uh, it's been three months. I had my three-month checkup with my shoulder surgery, surgeon. And uh, the bone has completely healed. I have no scar tissue. The cartilage is fine. So uh, I'm getting back to it. And hopefully <laughs> I'll be able to throw a good right hook, you know, probably within the next month and a half. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I, uh, I'm glad you're healing. And you're looking well. The last time I, well, I saw you once on Fox News there, and your face was all skin up and different color. Well, yeah. and you were out of so you're healing well. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Uh, my wife Angela found this product, uh, this drink mix called Juven, J U V E N. It has collagen and it's for wound healing. And within a, about a month, I mean, my my face completely uh, healed, but I still have some scars on my arms. That's that's probably going to be with me permanently. Yeah. But again, I'm alive. I'm still with you, and I'm in the fight for America. Well, we are all happy for that. God bless you for that, man. I'm glad to hear that. Um, let me. I, I didn't. I just thought. Of, do you exercise? Do you work out prior to this accident? Were you working out and kind of in good condition anyway? Oh, yeah. The doctor said that uh, my physical condition definitely helped. Uh, yeah. You know, I was doing about, uh, you know, 60 push-ups at a sitting, you know, running, you know, up to five miles, swimming and everything. So uh, that has helped me. And I'm back to my physical uh, regimen and routine. Not not up to the to the 60 push-ups yet. So I'm about at 25 to 30 right now because I got to get this shoulder right. back strong. Well, I'm glad to hear that, man. You made my day. Last time we talked, you were running for chair of the Republican Party of Texas, and you won. Congratulations. Thank you, Jesse. And so what does that Thank all you. mean now for the Republican Party of Texas? How, things, how are you going to improve on things there? Well, first of all, it's all about the messaging, and it's all about getting people to understand a clear choice and clear delineation from the progressive socialist left and the Republican Party of Texas. One of the critical messages I want to get out first and foremost is that the Republican Party of Texas was founded on Independence Day of 1867 by 150 black men. And I am not the first, I'm not the second, I'm the third uh, black chairman of the Republican Party of Texas. So when we continue to hear the left talk about racism and, and all of these things of that nature, I tell people very simply that the Republican Party of Texas has never uh, been about racism. As a matter of fact, black lives have always mattered to the Republican Party of Texas because yeah. at the same time blacks were find, founding and establishing this party in 1867, the Democrats were established in the Ku Klux Klan. And so, uh, you know, I often, you know, tell people that, you know, you look at the black community, Hispanic community, uh, you know, many of the minority communities, they're conservative in nature. And I think that that's the number one message I want to get out there is that those conservative principles and values are the reasons why Texas is strong. Right on. You know, this morning I was talking about California when I moved here in 1968. Oh, I do want to say, when I was growing up, most black people were Republicans, so I totally understand where you're coming from on that. Uh, when I moved here in 1968, California and Los Angeles was a beautiful, beautiful area, and now it looked like a dump house or something. It's just shocking to drive down the road and just see what 
homeless people everywhere and just fires and all kinds of things are happening. And the Republican Party in California doesn't seem to take advantage of this opportunity because if we had a strong leader Republican Party here in California, I believe this is a perfect time to take it back from the Democrats because things are so bad. But we don't seem to have that leadership in California. What does it take to build a strong leadership in a city like Los Angeles? Well, I think it's all about the messaging and it's all about the courage to do so. As a matter of fact, uh, this past week, uh, every Monday, I put out a chairman's message point and I talked about this SB 145, this uh, Senate bill that Gavin Newsom signed into law yeah. that talked about you know, sex offenders. And as long as you have 10 years of separation, uh, you're not really classified as a sex offender. So therefore, a, a 23 year old can have sex with a 14 year old out of California. And so I just say, we don't want to have that happen here in Texas. You know, people talk about turning Texas blue. You know, we look at our capital city of Austin right here, and we see the exact same things that have, uh, you know, you just mentioned out in, uh, in California, the homeless situation, the fact that they have defunded police, $150 million. Crime is on the uh, on the increase. So you have to have the courage to draw those examples. You have to be bold to get out there and say the things that need to be said. And, and I think that you're right. Uh, if there's ever time to go after the progressive socialist left and their agenda and their ideology in California, now is the time to do that. Because you look at safety and security, you look at what just happened to those county sheriffs out there in LA, and I just continue to pray for their recovery. But the fact that you had people that were going out and, and shouting and saying they hope they die, the fact that you had a city manager that uh, said that this is uh, the chickens are coming home to roost and that basically they deserve to be shot, those are the things that are reprehensible, and I think that we need to call the left out on that. Yeah, I agree. Another weird thing that's happened, I don't know if it's weird or not, in my own family, uh, aunts and uncles and cousins and things, they're Christian people. And so when we get together and I tell them what's really going on, like about the homeless situation and that the police officers are not just going around killing blacks because they don't have anything else to do, is these people are resisting arrest or they're acting as though they're going for uh, a, a, some type of weapon. They're not following the instructions of the cop. They don't believe it. They think that it's the other way around, that the cops are just killing the blacks because they are black. And the Republican Party here in Los Angeles are not getting the message out what's really going on. The media is not putting the message out. And so a lot of, in my own family, they believe a lie because they're not hearing the other side. And they think, I'm making it up. I'm, like, I'm not making these things up. But they're, yeah. they're watching MSNBC, CNN, and nobody else is really getting the real truth out there. Well, that's that's my my biggest uh, duty is to get that message out and to make sure that I am arming uh, Republicans, conservatives all across the state of Texas with the truth. You know, in uh, 2019, there were only nine, nine unarmed black men that were shot by white police officers in, that, in the entire year of 2019. Yeah. But you think about how many black babies are murdered in the womb every day. Yeah. You know, the black community makes up 13% of the population of the United States of America, but yet we're 35% of the abortions in the United States of America. And so those are the type of things that we need to be speaking about and getting folks to understand. When was the last time you heard Black Lives Matter say anything about Planned Parenthood? an organization that was founded by a white supremacist and a racist by the name of Margaret Sanger. So that's how we put people on the defense, and that's how we have to start educating people to get them to know the true facts. We don't see Black Lives Matter saying anything about what's going on in the black-on-black -black crime in many of our urban population centers. One of the things that you champion is fatherlessness. Yeah. And I have not heard Black Lives Matter say a word about fatherlessness, the fact that only 24% of young black children have a mother and father in the home. So again, these are the type of uh, truths that we have to get out of there. And that's why, you know, the, the documentary that you and I were in, Uncle Tom, is mm -hmm. doing incredibly well. And uh, that documentary, the director of it, Justin Malone, is from right here in Dallas, Texas. And so it has, it has really changed the narrative in Texas. Absolutely. The, down in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, there was a settlement done for $12 million. Uh, there was a woman by the name of Brianna 
Taylor, sure. who they say were killed, but they left out the drug house and all that kind of stuff. So I wonder, and you could correct me on this one. I was thinking about black on black crime and just out of control. Places like Chicago and other places. And you don't hear mm-hmm. Black Lives Matter. You don't hear the race hustling black lawyers or anyone down in those areas dealing with that. But when it's white on black, whether it's an officer or whatever, they are there. And it seemed to be all about the money rather than about what is right and about the people. It seemed to be about the money because there's no money in going after black on black crime. But when you go after the cops, when you go after white people, it seemed to be about the money. Am I wrong? No, you you are hitting a, a very interesting point right on the head. And I will tell you, first and foremost, with the issue with Breonna Taylor, uh, I came out and said the whole thing about warrantless, uh, you know, door knocking by the uh, police. Uh, I'm against that, it, just the same as I'm against the red flag laws, uh, because I think that's an invasion and uh, of, of of your home, and that's a violation yeah. of, uh, I believe, your Fourth Amendment rights. Yeah. So they they were wrong with that warrantless, uh, you know, entry. Uh, but I will I will say that when you look at how the left cherry picks. The, uh, who they want to stand up and defend. It all ties back to their ideological agenda. You know, you look at someone like Jacob Blake, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that the young man was shot, but he was, the police were called to that house because it was a complaint against him. Yes. Uh, a sexual assault complaint against him. And, and I don't know how it is that we kind of forget that. Yeah. So it wasn't like he was some innocent guy that was, you know, pushing his, his kids down the sidewalk and someone just drove up and shot him for no reason. So I think that we have to get that full truth out there. And the, the, the leftist media does a good job in not getting the full truth out there. And that's propaganda. That's not reporting. That's not objective. That's not the freedom of the press that I believe that we uh, expect an objective press. That is a propagandized press. That's amazing to me. Um, Somehow or another, we got to inform the people because they're getting the wrong information from the wrong uh, uh, news reporting. So we got to get that out. Uh, One other thing, not one other thing, but I want to ask you this and I talked about this uh, this morning. A lot of people are leaving California and they're moving to Texas, uh, yeah. Tennessee, Alabama, and I mean, other places. Should people run or should they stand up and fight? Meaning well, in the I, right I'm, way. Well, it's very interesting, you know, because I'm a soldier and, and soldiers, we, 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 we don't surrender. We don't retreat. We right. stand and fight. And California used to be a red state. Yes. And, and I think that you can, you know, return it back to what it used to be. I mean, that's the state that produced Richard Nixon, produced Ronald Reagan, just the same as Nevada, uh, Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, Virginia. All of these were, you know, red states. And what you end up seeing happen, especially in a place like California, is those coastal elites is the people in the major urban population centers. And that's where you see the greatest amount of failure of the last policies. But, you know, I would like to see people stay there and try to fight and try to turn things around. I understand that for economic purposes and things of that nature, you know, I cannot tell you how many people that I run into that are recent Texas citizens that have come from California. Yeah. But the most important thing is that, Jesse, if you are leaving a place like a California, Illinois, New York, and New Jersey, and you're coming to strong, successful red states, why bring a failed ideology with you? Yes. Why continue to vote for the same failed policies as the ones that you're leaving. That you know, when when God was destroying Sodom and Gomorrah, he he told Lot and his family one thing: don't look back. Yeah, that's right. It's amazing to see that. Um, there is. Oh, are you surprised to see so many people following so-called Black Lives Matter? Black Lives Matter is an organization that was founded by a bunch of fat, radical black lesbians. And they say it. They are monsters. They are against God. They are against the nuclear family. They are against uh, protecting the unborn children. They don't mm-hmm. believe in capitalism, even though they are using it. They got a lot of money for what they're doing. Yes. Uh, are you surprised that there are a lot of men and women, uh, black and white and others, following a group like that? Rather than well, denouncing it's, them. It's the irrational emotionalism. 
what the left is very shrewd at doing is taking a Marxist organization, putting certain faces in front of it, and then branding it with a name like Black Lives Matter. If you go back and read the history, the NAACP was not founded by Webb W.B. Du Bois. It was founded by <laughs> white progressives, yeah. uh, you know, socialists, and they put him in charge, and he was a socialist himself. So they are very shrewd in doing this, but the truth has to get out. If you go to the website, you will see exactly who they are. But the shakedown and so many of these businesses and corporations that are funneling money into them is quite shocking. But I will tell you that as we get out, people like yourself and others who are saying that this organization is not dealing with the issues that are facing the black community. Right. I think you start to see people peeling away from it. And it is a radical organization. Look at what they did up in Rochester, New York, uh, this past weekend and Pittsburgh when they went and, and accosted and assaulted people who were just sitting there trying to have a meal at a sidewalk restaurant. That's amazing to see that. What can white people do to overcome the fear of Black Lives Matter and others like that? Because whites are, afraid, not all, but most, they're afraid of being called racist. They're afraid yeah. of losing their businesses and because of their name calling. What can they do to overcome that? I will tell them, and, and this is what I tell everyone here in Texas, my, my white brothers and sisters, is to read the book by a black conservative from California by the name of Shelby Steele, and it's called White Guilt. Yeah. Because that's exactly what is being uh, castigated upon them. That book was written back in like 2004, 2005, and, and I remember reading it when I was in Afghanistan. But it is such a poignant read and is an accurate portrayal of what the left is doing to try to make white people believe that, you know, they, they owe us something. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up in the inner city of Atlanta, Georgia, and I had every opportunity. It was just up to me to take those opportunities that this great nation affords to me. And the same with you as well, Jesse. Yeah. So uh, we have to stop being economically enslaved. We have to be economically empowered. We have to stop being victimized and start to be victors in our own right, in our own communities. And I will tell you that, like I said, I always say the, the greatest purveyors of systemic racism in America has been, is, and probably will continue to be the Democrat Party. So read White Guilt by Shelby Steele. I think that will open up a lot of people's eyes. You're right about that. I highly recommend that book as well. The Guardians is reporting that black American church, church leaders accused Donald Trump of inciting white terrorism against black people with his latest ad which featured videos of protesters out on the street. What do you say about that? I say that the black pastors have sold out their uh, congregations. They're supposed to be the shepherds, but instead they're feeding their, their sheep to the wolves. And uh, you know, it, it goes back to what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, where you're going to have these false prophets, those people that go out, go out there and speak those false doctrines, and they're looking to tickle people's ears. But then again, many of these pastors are being uh, supported by the left yeah. to go out and do these things and say these things. So they need to ask themselves, if they're a reverend, if they're a pastor, Whose principles and values are they standing up for? You can't say one thing on a Sunday in the pulpit and then go out there and completely do something different Monday through Saturday. That's right. Well, I, I, once again, I want to congratulate you as chair of the Republican Party. And when you get tired of working there, we need you to come and chair the Republican Party <laughs> of California. <laughs> we definitely need you. How can we help you? Or what can we do if we can help in any way? Well, keep me in your prayers as I continue to recover from that motorcycle accident. But uh, you can go and visit the website, the Republican Party of Texas, texasgop.org, uh, and, and just stand up and, and tell the truth and share the truth. I think that's the most important thing. This is a, this is an, a vital election cycle. It's two very different uh, roads that this country can take. We see what is happening with the rule of the mob and the chaos and the violence. Let's stand up for the rule of law and law and order. Yeah. Were you surprised, as I was, about Herman Cain? Uh, may his soul rest in peace. It's a great loss. Huge loss. Dear friend of mine and a mentor. You know, I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, as well as a Herman. Yeah. So uh, had a lot of great conversations, and he really gave me a lot of insights, thoughts, and perspectives to help me to be the, the strong black conservative that I am today. So he is sorely missed, but we will carry on his legs. Absolutely. And my last question did you, I saw you on Fox and Friends one morning, and they asked a question or showed a little 
sound bite, and when they went back to you, you looked like you had fallen asleep. Had you fallen asleep, or you just couldn't hear them? No, what happened was the uh, I lost the connection, man. <laughs> yeah, my wife was looking at the TV and she started laughing at me. She said, "You sleepyhead," and because she was sitting there right. It was from the house, and and the the Zoom, the the Skype link just froze on me. I know when I saw it, I'm like, "What that? He must be pretty tired." Cause it looked like you were snoring, man. No, 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 that's not me, man. I'm a soldier. I know that. I do. Well, God bless you and thank you for coming on anytime you want. This is your home. You're welcome here anytime or whatever. Uh, thank you. Uh, one last time, your website, how can people get involved? Yeah, texasgop.org. You can follow us on Facebook, on YouTube, and also on Twitter. And then, of course, I have Alan West for Texas, which is my personal website, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Well, they have the right man uh, in that job there, so I, I wish you well, and thank you again, and continue to heal, and say hello to your wife for me, all right? I will. Thanks, Jesse. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye now. Amazing, folks. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it.